What's up, everybody? Welcome to We Have Cool Friends, the cool show. We interview our cool friends about the cool things they're doing. I'm Greg, and this is my cool friend, Jack Quaid. Hello, Greg. So Hello, Jack here. Quaid. Now, oh, thank you for coming. Thanks for making the time. I know, busy yeah. schedule in this quarantine for everybody. Lots of places you could be, things you could be doing. It's weird. I, I keep realizing that, like, yes, it is easier to be busy from home, but then it's like you can't go anywhere else. Like you yeah, have to yeah, be yeah. glued to your Zoom screen or Discord screen or what have you. We're not uh, sponsored. Don't worry about it. You know, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> fuck Discord. You can say whatever you want to talk about Zoom. Discord, a thing I just <laughs> used today. Um, uh, no, but uh, thank you so much for having me. This is this is awesome. I feel like you and I have been. Have we only really met in person like once or twice? Like I, I'm trying that to time think. you came like, to SF when you came up with Sasquatch and did the show and we went to it. Yeah, that was the first time yeah. we met and only time we met in person. Yeah. Oh, my God. But I just I feel like I think we had like a Twitter interaction a few years ago when I was uh, doing Sasquatch. We did. Uh, we met on July 13th, 2014 <laughs> via Twitter. I went and did my research before because I don't remember anymore how I randomly ran into Sasquatch Sketch on YouTube, a great right. sketch comedy troupe you're in uh, that is on YouTube that everybody should go check out. And I <laughs> tweeted at all of you how funny you all were. And I, I was blown away when you all responded. You're like, thank you so much for watching. I think I it was something about like, uh, uh, oh my God, I remember you tweeting at me and I freaked out because I was a huge fan of yours from like your IGN days sure. and everything. And I think, uh, I think I said something about like the pride of long Island or something yeah, involving yeah, yeah. Colin or something. Colin, yeah. Uh, but yeah, it was just, uh, it was a dream. It was a nerd's dream come true. So thank you. <laughs> well, I think, you know, if that's the nerd's dreams come true, I don't know what we describe your life currently. Cause that was the thing of getting to see you guys in the Sasquatch. Just be like, Oh, that's cool. They're making cool YouTube content. They're like us YouTubers. And now everywhere I look, I see your face next to Carl Urban's. It's a, uh, it's a good place to put my face next to Carl Urban. <laughs> uh, it really makes me look better by comparison. Oh, of really. course. Yeah, 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 really exactly. Nice. You know, put the ugly friend in there, then you look even yeah. better, you know? Yeah, oh, totally, yeah. totally. Yeah. Of course, it's of course. Good time. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, it's weird. I, I saw like, I, I've never really seen my face on a billboard. This has been the first time and uh, it's really surreal and, and crazy. And uh, yeah, I don't know. It's, it's, it's weird. It's kind of like, I don't know. It almost feels like it's not you up there. It's weird. Yeah, Amazon's yeah. been like really pimping us out for this thing. So, I mean, I guess that's good. Of course. Of course and if people yeah. don't know, you are the star of The Boys. Season two available right now. First three episodes. Right. Friday, another one drops and it continues weekly like that. You are, of course, Petite Huey on it. And Petite Huey, yes. <laughs> as a, a fan of the comic book, man, you're just crushing this. And I love the way you Thank guys you. are interpreting it and making it your own. Thank you. Yeah, that... Uh, the fact that you said you were a fan of the comic book, that means a lot just because I, I cannot tell you how absolutely terrified I was to take on <laughs> this part because, you know, I look nothing like and sound nothing like the comic book version. The comic book version of Huey is Scottish and like five feet tall, maybe shorter. Like he's and I'm six foot three. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I knew that they would be taking some creative liberties with it. Also, it was based, the the image of Huey in the comics is based off of Simon Pegg circa Spaced. Yeah, and I that was the most happened. brilliant thing when they when they uh, put him on the show, right? Because I, so I remember reading The Boys month to month and I remember really? cracking those first, oh yeah, cracking that first issue and being like, this looks like the dude from Shaun of the Dead. <laughs> and that's why yeah. it was such a brilliant maneuver when they did that first trade paperback that they got Simon Pegg to write the foreword. And again, like, so cool. In a very similar way to you, like, and I'm I'm reaching here, but stick with me. You know how it is when you watch something and it's not huge yet, and you feel that personal connection. As somebody who in mid Missouri, circa 2004, right, went and saw Shaun of the Dead in the one yeah. theater it was running in. I remember being in on what I felt like was the ground floor to that point where I have such an affinity for Kevin Smith films growing up that, like, right. for Simon Pegg, it was the same way of like, that's my dude. And so to pick up this comic book, be like, this looks just like Simon Pegg, and then have yeah. him write the letter and still be such a fan of just anyone caring what he looked like. He wasn't mad that they stole his likeness. It's crazy. I was talking with Derek Robertson, uh, who also was just. By the way, so, so wait, earlier I was trying to say, so like Simon and Derek both could have been just so mad that I'm in the show at my very presence. <laughs> Simon never technically played the part, but it felt like he did. So that was just like so intimidating. 
but he could not be and like you simon's my dude like i i when i first watched john of the dead i was like this guy is incredible and i have so much respect for him as an actor and as a writer and he could not be more nice and kind and uh it really felt like he was kind of giving me his endorsement and same with derek robertson and i remember derek saying to me that simon the the way that he like was cool with them using his likeness they didn't have permission at first and then simon saw it and instead of going like what is this i'm gonna sue was like all right and that's the kind of simon's the reason we have the boys show the boys comic it could have all been done right there with like a massive lawsuit but he was just like a chill dude (laughs) And so, yeah, I can't only imagine what it's like to step into something that has that fan base behind it and that, you know, it's a very much we all know what it, we've all seen it now. Comic books being brought to the screen, but we all if you've read it, you have that connection to the characters. You feel like you know them in a certain way and how you'd break that out. Yeah, no, it's it's uh, that was super intimidating because, you know, I I I knew that there were huge fans of it. I knew I looked or sounded nothing like the character. So I read all of them just to get like the spirit of Sure. who the guy is and, and why people connected with the character. And ultimately I just came to the realization he's just a normal dude in extraordinary circumstances, yeah, very yeah. gory, uh, very bloody circumstances. Uh, <laughs> and it's just been, it's just been like the best job I've ever had in my life period. And I, I, the fact that you're a fan of it, that means the world, man, seriously. So I want to talk more about it, but I do want to talk about the journey to it. Sure, Cause again, sure. I, and I, this is at the risk of just sounding like I'm blowing the most smoke up your ass of all time. But yeah. like, do you feel like you're in that moment? Like you're you're like on you're you've caught fire? Because again, I remember what a big deal, and I'm blanking on it now. You were I remember what a big deal it was for me as a fan of Sasquatch and you to see you on the HBO show about the music industry that I'm blanking on. Oh yeah, vinyl, yeah. Vinyl, right? And I remember, oh my God, I know it's Jack Quaid. I know him. You know what I mean? Well, that's great. And then obviously since then, the boys being the biggest thing. But on top of that, uh, you had the other movie out th- uh, that I'm also blanking on where it's, it's okay. You. It's really okay. <laughs> no, no, you and the girl going on the uh, the date to the wedding oh, thing. Plus one, yeah. Thank you very much. And then of course, now Star Trek Lower Decks. It's, you, you, it's that weird thing where you've crossed over and you're a name people recognize and you're also on two very distinct fandoms right now right of being with the boys in comic books and being with star trek which is another sci-fi fandom yeah i just feel incredibly lucky man it's weird i I, because i am a nerd and yeah i get to be part of two very nerdy things um (laughs) uh, it's just crazy it's just it's really crazy i don't i don't know I'm, i'm one of those guys that like if i would were to out loud say like i've made it this is it this is the moment i'm like afraid of like karmically what will like what bus will hit me or whatever um no i honestly i i feel like the second you say that i don't know i just feel really lucky that's it it's it's just been really cool not only to be a part of these projects but to be a part of these projects that have such cool people involved in them like the cast the cast of the boys we've all just become this this family uh, and we're all going through this together. And we were, we were in Toronto shooting season two when season one came out and kind of, you know, blew up, I guess. And it was just great to be with those people because, you know, whether or not I'm personally in scenes with them uh, a ton or not, like we all still hang out and uh, they're just the best. Like I, I, they're my friends, they're my family. And I, I've never really had that working relationship with people before. It's really something special. And also, weirdly enough, on Star Trek Lower Decks, we're really close too. Um, I, I haven't met a ton of the people in person, really. Like uh, I know Mike McMahon, the showrunner, and Tanya Newsom pretty well at this point. Yeah. And you know, before pandemic, we would like go out to dinners and stuff. And I'm slowly getting to know Eugene and Noel and the rest of the cast. But everyone is just so nice and. That's something that's so rare is to do something that people respond to and to have it be a joy to work on is just, I don't know, that never happens. So I feel very lucky. You talk about uh, season one and finding the boys and you guys really becoming a unit, a family up there and how that's not common. Is that not common because the projects you were doing before weren't something filmed that far away on location? Like, because I assume you're LA based, right? Still, and yeah, then yeah. you're there, so you're doing a lot of stuff there with vinyl or whatever. Would that have been where that filmed? And then you all went home to your houses and lives. Yeah, well, vinyl was vinyl was New York. Vinyl, we all got really close to. Uh, I, I've been I've been really lucky. Like, I haven't. You hear like horror stories of sets where I don't know. There's like the the lead is a diva or sure. uh, you know. It's just like 
poor working conditions. I personally, I haven't really experienced a ton of that. I think, I think with, with vinyl, uh, that was like my first TV show. So I was just like taking it all in and I didn't really have the perspective of, oh, this is really great. It, it was really great, but oh, socially, this is really great. And everyone's a, a kind human. I just kind of thought that was the norm. And then <laughs> oh, great. Hollywood's you know, awesome. Like, yeah. Everyone in showbiz is cool, right? Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, then I think there was something special about the boys in terms of like, you know, it was a comic book that, you know, had a fan base, but not a ton of people had heard of. Yeah, yeah. Um, we were all, I guess, besides Carl, I, I mean, I, I know a lot of people know a lot of the cast from other things besides the boys, but, you know, we were all starting this thing together and it kind of surprised people and to just kind of, be a part of a group that gets to go through that together was really cool. Um, and I don't know, just building the characters and figuring out who we were that first season was just so rewarding and fun. And Eric Kripke has just a way of, he calls it a no asshole policy and it's, it, it works, you know, you cast people <laughs> that are good people as well as good actors. Um, but uh, yeah, he was very into like collaborating and making sure we really took ownership of our characters and improvising and, it was just, it was, it was great. I, I have nothing bad to say, which is, I feel like, uh, that's a good thing. Good. That's a good yeah, thing. Don't, don't feel bad about that. I feel like so, I'm a broken record, but it was, it was great. <laughs> how did casting work for this? Did you know you were going out for the boys? Did they approach you for the role of Huey? Like, how does that work? Yeah, I, uh, it's always, it's kind of different every time, but this time it was, I, I got an email, uh, with the script of the pilot and I didn't realize it was it was based off a comic book when I read it. I just thought somebody took uh, the world as it exists today and inserted superheroes into it. Yeah. Um, and then I had a meeting with Eric about the role of Huey just to see if we got along, I think. Uh, and we did, and he's great. Um, and then I had a, f a chemistry read with Erin because she was the first person cast as Starlight. Oh, I didn't uh, know and that. then I went in she's for great. Seth and Evan. She's amazing. She's so yeah. great. Um, and uh, made me feel so welcome in that audition room and just couldn't have been a nicer human. Uh, and uh, then I went in for Seth and Evan, which was so nerve wracking. Sure. It was the, it's just, come on. They're like, it's like Simon Pegg and them are like my, my idols. And it was just, do you let that, do you let that slip to them? Do you talk to Seth Rogen about like, I love your work by the way. And I, I, just work, work, <laughs> I didn't want to in that, in that room, but, but since I've just, I don't know. Hopefully. Also, I feel like I've done enough press at this point where I'm just like, they're great that maybe you've seen it. Uh, hopefully they've seen it. Yeah. Hopefully they know that they're great because they're great. Uh, but yeah, like Seth Rogen read as Butcher in my audition, which was he didn't do the accent, but he said the words, which are like hardcore Cockney slang. And my brain yeah, didn't yeah. know how to compute that. <laughs> it's like, we got to get him in the boot and then we're going to bugger off or whatever. And it was just... Uh, very surreal. And then I waited a while. Like it took a while for them to get back to me. And then when I found out I got the role, I, oh, I, I was just happy for like a month straight. It was just great. Yeah. So then my next question comes to you talking about the uh, meetings and finding out who Huey is and improv and all these different things. Was there a hesitation on your part to read the source material? Because I know so many people, it seems like it's yeah. a light switch for them where they're, they're either all in and they want to know everything or they don't want to do any, know anything about what came before. Yeah, I, sometimes I've done that where, like, especially if you, let's say you like play a part that like somebody else played in a movie from like decades ago and it was sure, like sure. an iconic performance. I, if, if I was going to step into one of those, I wouldn't watch that movie. Or if I had had watched that movie in the past, I wouldn't rewatch it just because I feel like with me personally, sometimes little mannerisms come in subconsciously mm. and, I'm, and I, I don't want to copy anybody. But with, it's a comic book character. It's not like he's living, breathing, walking, and talking. It, it was a little bit easier. Also because I knew that I had a meeting with Eric and Eric was like, look, we're, you don't have to try to be the comic book version of Huey. We're gonna make, we're gonna, it's still gonna be the spirit of him, but we're gonna uh, make our own decisions, not only with Huey, but with a lot of other things, uh, little deviations from the comics. So, uh, I forgot what the question was. Um, well, you read no, the comic, like it, what it, your it, idea was. It didn't phase me. I wanted to know what the world was. I wanted to know what the spirit of the character was. It, it didn't really freak me out. And then um, I feel like I'm rambling, but Eric would do this thing. Uh, I, I love telling the story. The first day uh, of shooting for me, it was a scene with me and, and Carl. We're in the bar. 
Carl's trying to tell, Butch is trying to tell Huey to put a bug in the Seven Tower. And Dan Trachtenberg, the director of that, was really into improvising. And uh, I added a line about, you know, how my favorite musician is James Taylor. And, and that, that in that way, I'm not a good infiltrator or something. And then Eric came up to me and was like, okay, that's great. Make that a list. Uh, James Taylor, Simon and Garfunkel, Billy Joel. And then something about Billy Joel just stuck. Uh, and <laughs> the next day we filmed the scene where Robin dies. Spoilers. We filmed the scene where Robin dies. And uh, the line was originally something about like, she says to Huey, like, uh, we can't keep waking up every day staring up at that dumb Led Zeppelin poster. Uh, and then that, that got changed to Billy Joel poster. And don't you ever besmirch Billy Joel. Like all of that came from a dumb improv bit that Eric helped me facilitate. And it said so much about the character. And now I'm hearing like, we didn't start the fire in our trailers for season two. It's just, I, I live in a very surreal world right now, but that's Eric awesome. is so good at facilitating that. And yeah, that's, that's the, the thing. Awesome thing. You know, I'm, I'm lucky enough to have seen all of season two. And so to see even oh, through yeah. lines from that of things that, you know, happened that early in the pilot that are all the way through to the end of season two. That's incredible. It's so cool. I, I, I just hats off to sure. I'll do it. Hats off. My hair is insane. Uh, <laughs> I knew off. it would come up. Go ahead and take it off. You said, oh, hold on. Give me a second. I'm going to be late. I look like shit. And then you just put on a hat. That's <laughs> what you, that was your like fix. Shit. This is it, man. This is my life. Now you look great. That's and then that was hair. the big reveal of the yeah. hair. <laughs> All right. It's been great having you, Jack. We'll talk to you later. Thanks for coming through. We have cool friends. All right. So, so I think what's <laughs> really cool about it is this idea you already mentioned, right? That the comic book itself has a fan base, but it wasn't a juggernaut. If you were in comics, you understood, and especially the controversy about it. But maybe you yeah. missed it. Maybe you didn't know something about it. When you're making the show do you feel like you're making something that's going to resonate with a larger audience? Yeah, I think, I think I do because I don't know. We've, we've weirdly, the show is more, uh, or at least the source material is more relevant now than it ever has been. And that, yeah. that's what was really cool. Cause the comic was, was from, I think like the early two thousands, there's a lot of like kind of post nine 11 stuff happening in the comics. And, uh, in the, in the TV show, we actually get to talk about real world stuff, which is crazy. Uh, even though we're in this insane superhero filled world, um, yeah, you you do you do realize like, oh, a lot of this stuff can apply to modern day. You know how how we have like, you know, leaders that are supposed to be our heroes, but it turns out they're you know they're not quite great. Um, and, season two uh, goes places. Like season two goes contemporary yeah. places. I was not expecting it to go. I didn't expect it either. Sorry, Kevin. I it's just the thing you never you. See. Well, it's just funny because I could have forwarded you the email, but you never asked nicely. <laughs> you know what I mean? You just did stuff like this where you interrupt my big moment with Hollywood actors. Yeah, but you know that Tim is, he stays in the lines. Greg Miller doesn't. I'm wild card. Nobody, now. Busan, you know, I'm going to get out there and do what I want, Kev. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Email. On top of all that, email. Jack, on top of all that, Jack, no one could hear Kevin. On <laughs> oh, really? Kevin's mic was muted for the audience, so no God one could hear what he's saying. Damn it, I'm sorry. There it is. They can hear me now. <laughs> Kevin, you're, uh, you're a peach. I love you so much. All right, I'm going to go. So what you just heard was, you summarized <laughs> the whole thing. <laughs> Uh, I think just get it. Yeah, that's kind of funny in a nutshell. They understand it's fine. <laughs> so yeah, like I'm, I was not nervous. Nervous isn't the right word, but when I, I think a property that again, you're in on so early comes yeah. around and they're going to do something with it. There is always that thing of like, Oh my gosh, what's this going to become right now? I'm on the same precipice. And again, you know, it's funny that you bring up uh, Seth and Evan, right. Of invincible and invincible uh, comic oh, yeah, series. I yeah. love so much from Robert Kirkman. And here we are on the precipice of that animated series finally dropping and the cast looks great. So you're in, but you're always, it's that thing of like, right. Is it going to be what I remember it being? And I think, well, you care about it so much. You want it to, you know, live up to your expectations, of course. I mean, especially if you get on the ground floor of something like that sure. really matters to you. It really does, of course. And so, yeah, I think what the boys was so interesting uh, as an approach was uh, coming out of nowhere for so many people seeing it and 
hitting at that right time. You know, I mean, right now, I think we sit around and we all say, go, man, I, where's another Marvel movie? Gosh, why can't we? I, I, it, it is the longest we've gone without our hit of the good stuff. Yeah. But <laughs> for the boys to drop when it did right in that, you know, Avengers Infinity War, Avengers Endgame. We all love the right. Avengers and superheroes so much to have them drop. That. Yeah, we came out right as Infinity War was kind of like heating up. Yeah. And so it was that thing of like, you know, this perfect superhero universe and for you guys to be the exact inverse of that and have you know homelander be homelander yeah exactly yeah no that was um i forgot we came out around that time yeah we came out around a time where there was a uh, just a huge surplus of, of 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 superhero content out there it was it was everywhere you know it was yeah. uh it felt like superheroes were real in our world because every day you would see at least one of them on a billboard or on an ad on, on the internet. And yeah, I guess we were kind of this, this inverse of that. And I, I think our show definitely knew that. And, and with our marketing, definitely. <laughs> that because like, yeah, I think, I don't know. I, I it's like, yeah, it, it just answers so many questions of like, okay, what if, you know, especially with like Homelander and Superman, like what if Superman actually existed? Like there's no way. I think a lot of our media, superhero media presupposes that you are a good altruistic person and then you get powers or the powers make you a good and altruistic person. But I sure. think our show is, we're not the first one to do it, but we're, we're making these superheroes human and therefore they have flaws and uh, some of them are just outright sociopaths and some of them are just kind of selfish. Uh, and I think that that's such a fascinating way into these people because they're not gods. Although Homelander would like to believe he is they're they're people, you know, even though they have crazy powers. Yeah. And I, what I love about it is the corporate influence. You know what I mean? Again, yes. you, you, we, I think when we watch, you go to the MCU movies and you watch this bright, colorful universe, people doing the things out of, you know, the, their moral character, like Steve Rogers and Captain America, right? right? Uh, to then come the other side and be like, okay, well, that's one side of it. But what if in our world, superheroes were introduced and yeah, a corporation did get control of this and they exactly. did have this at their disposal? How would they use them and put them into these propaganda movies and ads and all these yeah. things? It's like, ugh, yeah. That would be how this yeah. would go, probably, isn't it? Exactly. I mean, somebody's got to make money off of it, you know? Like, somebody yeah. has to. And uh, that's the real control. I, I, that's why I love, um, in season two, Giancarlo Esposito's character. Because yeah. he is, he's in control. Because he's where the money is. Uh, and he's starting to, you know, kind of push back against the soups and and and, and get them in line. Which is just so... I don't know. It's cool. It's 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 not cool, I guess, but it's just interesting to have. It's cool storytelling. It's, it's cool, cool story. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, corporate greed is not cool. <laughs> Man, but, uh, you know what I love, kids? <laughs> corporate greed. CEOs oh, that with corporate greed. <laughs> uh, but yeah, no, it's a really fascinating, uh, and especially oh, I don't know if I can spoil. I mean, I guess there are episodes that have come out. It's within the first three of season two. You know what? I'll, I'll let it be because I know some people are, are waiting till all of our episodes come out to, to binge, it. binge it. So I'll leave it at that. But uh, no, it's fascinating. And also the fact that I get to play like a guy who essentially is a victim of, of like collateral damage because of these people is uh, is really fascinating and how they just they cover up everything because they have to maintain this squeaky clean image. Yeah. Yeah. It's just a, it's a, I feel like I've seen it in one of my favorite movies growing up was mystery men. Do you ever see that? Oh yeah. Like ben ben Stiller, Stiller. Yeah. It's so good. And that remember uh, captain amazing Greg Kinnear. Yeah. He rolls in and he has like the, it's basically like a NASCAR suit. Like all of his sponsors are on his suit. And I remember that was like the first time I ever saw like corporate ties to a super human. And uh, I love that our show just expands on that idea tenfold. Yeah, and I think that's what's fascinating about the season and where you guys take it. And again, yeah, no spoilers, but it's definitely worth the watch and people should be part yeah. of it. Um, so season one, you're going, you think you have something here that is, is special or whatever. What was that reaction like to put it out, especially to be filming? I didn't remember that you guys were filming season two while season one began to air. Yeah, we were filming episode four of season two oh, wow. by the time that... Uh, the boys, yeah, by the time season one dropped. And I remember there was a there was a very there was a day on set where the show was out and 
it was it was scary because we were all like not checking our phones. We were all like, okay, because <laughs> the thing that I remember being at like a a party or something with with Anthony Starr uh, in Toronto, and he <laughs> came up to me and he was like, hey, um, you know what I've been thinking about, and you know what could have happened, but it didn't happen. Uh, us being out here shooting a season two of a show, and then season one comes out and everybody hates it. <laughs> like that would be the worst case. And I was thinking about that too. Like that'd be the worst case scenario of yeah, yeah, being in the bad, middle of shooting bad. a season two and just being like, nobody likes this. Nobody, <laughs> absolutely no one well, enjoys this. Well, you're getting more everybody. We'll try to yeah, be better. <laughs> that's great for morale. Um, <laughs> so we were just like praying that didn't happen. Uh, I think we were all just, we were cool if people just liked it not necessarily loved it. We just didn't want to be hated while we were filming a sure, second sure. season. Cause you just, sure, you sure. never really know. Like I thought it was great, but I I've been in stuff where I'm like, that's the best thing ever. And then it comes out and everyone's like, Boo. <laughs> you know, it's just, you just put your heart out there and sometimes, you know, it, it, that's just kind of the business. But um, yeah, it was, it was a scary day. But once we all kind of realized that, you know, when people started making fan art of our characters and cosplaying as us, we were like, okay, this might be something. That's awesome. That's yeah. gotta be a great feeling. It was crazy. It was, it was a lot at once, but it was, it was cool. It was really cool. And the, the boys fans have been amazing. And I, before the pandemic, I went to a few conventions and I got to, you know, actually get up close with people, but they are just so awesome. And kind and and uh so supportive and i don't know i just i love all the boys fans they're incredible one of the things in season one and definitely in season two and i know there's already it already happened in the first three episodes some of it is you get covered in a lot of blood <laughs> that seems yeah, to be that's... a re reoccurring thing for huey it's kind of my thing now i, I never <laughs> thought it would be my thing but it's like my thing i'm like the guy covered in blood how is that does that wear on you i have to imagine you're sticky all the time your hair is always matted down yeah uh it's so season one was interesting because season one huey would get covered in blood and then we would like cut away we would cut away to something else and then the, ne the next time you saw him he was clean um season two there's a few moments where Huey gets covered in blood and then we follow him for the next few hours so what that means for <laughs> me is weeks of being on set and coming in and uh like having my day start with blood and it has to match the previous day's blood so they're meticulously right. applying blood and guts and, and 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 stuff onto me and yeah everything is sticky it it, it just hurts to be alive and moving <laughs> uh so there are days where i like it when people come around like before it takes like they would spray me with a little water bottle so that the blood actually started flowing again and being a little less dry and and terrible uh, your skin becomes just like way pinker for weeks and, sure. and you, you can't get it out. <laughs> um, head and shoulder shampoo is great to get it out of your hair. Um, okay. okay. But yeah, I have, and, and shaving cream for some reason is just, it gets it right off. Uh, these are my tips. Just wow. in case you're ever covered in cornstarch. Uh, okay. These are my tips. Okay. These are good tips. Yeah, everybody yeah. write these down. Let's put them up on yeah, the wiki. You, you know what I mean? <laughs> uh, last week, we had Nolan North famed voice actor on we have I cool love friends so much he had a lot of shit to talk about you uh he talked about me oh, yeah, oh, yeah he talked about you yeah yeah he tried well, no he was trying to act like oh i'm thinking about getting more guests on i'm thinking about having and he's like I have my big time hollywood friend jack quaid on i'm like <laughs> now nah, he's on here next week and he's like god damn it like we got him all right don't we worry were, i was trying to get on his show yeah we um uh yeah we it was, it was something about like covid safety we were like maybe i shouldn't come over not that he was like please come over. But we were just, we were just trying to figure it out. It was like a few months ago, but uh, he's the best. And he's, I did a video game. I did one video game in my life, Lord of the Rings, uh, Shadow of Mordor, where I play your son, Deer Heil. Oh, I and, didn't know uh, that. Yeah. And I, I, um, it was like my first and only video game job that I've ever done, but it was just after The Last of Us came out and I'm in a room with uh, Troy Baker, Nolan North, uh, like, even you know people who weren't in The Last of Us, or maybe they were, John DiMaggio, J.B. Blanc, um, Laura Bailey, yeah. uh, all these incredible people were in one room, and, I, I, and I'm in a mocap suit for like a few days, and it was maybe the most I've nerded out. It was pretty spectacular. It was awesome. So that's an interesting thing. You talked about uh, you know being aware of me, at least from IGN and stuff like that. 
where does where does video games fall into your life? Are you still actively playing a bunch of stuff? I'm still. I mean, there's like. A, okay, here we go. Let's let's see what. <laughs> um, I got Crash Bandicoot right here. Nice. Uh, yeah, where yeah, are yeah, the? Yeah. Oh my god. There's some. Yeah, I, I'm a I'm a huge video game nerd. Let's see if I yeah. can angle this. There's a Last of Us poster right. Oh yeah. Okay. Oh my god. Boom. Um. Yeah. No. Video games have been a part of my life for a very long time. I just remember. Being a kid, I, I grew up in that uh, N64, PlayStation 1 era. Crash was my guy. I'm so excited about that new game. Crash. Oh, yeah. I just, it's, the fact that I get to play it as a 28-year-old, I'm still just so excited. <laughs> um, and yeah, no, I just feel like they're, they've gotten to a point where there's such great forms of storytelling and, and uh like, what, what, what Naughty Dog's doing, what uh, Sucker Punch is doing, like, all these, I grew up with these developers, you know, and, and I... I am kind of like a huge fan. And every time they come out with a new thing, I'm I completely freak out. Uh, so yeah, no, I'm a huge, I'm just a huge game nerd, and and uh, yeah, it's just influenced my life in more ways than I think I know. I forgot. Uh, I was playing Avengers this week with a little boy named Andrew Goldfarb, and he works at Sucker Punch. And he oh, said wow. that he was very impressed that you started following him on Twitter and that you've been talking about Ghost of Tsushima. So I'm going to need your 30 second review of Ghost of Tsushima right now oh, for Andrew man. Goldfarb. I still haven't beaten it yet because I'm trying to do everything before I do what I believe is the That's, final. You're playing mission. it the right way. You're playing I'm it the playing right it way. The right way. Yeah. If I really like a game, I will like. I will try to platinum it. I did the same thing with with uh, Spider Man. Um, and, uh, yeah, uh, my, my 30 second review, it's real good. It's just great. It's exactly what I need right now. A game where an open world game where the world is beautiful and I can run through fields and, and <laughs> go people, outside, you know, go outside. It's exactly what I need right now. I think the story is great. I think all the actors in it are awesome. Uh, I can't, I, 10 out of 10 for Jack Quaid. Wow, I, look at that. Hard it's, scale, the Jack Quaid scale is hard. Photo mode alone is just spectacular. And I, I feel way cooler than I actually am when I'm like, oh yeah, that's a great shot. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm so, Ansel Adams. Yeah, man. <laughs> you talked about doing uh, Shadow of Mordor and not doing any other video games. Is that because you didn't enjoy the experience or is it just because your career, you, you'll take a job wherever you can and your I'll career went more? I, I, yeah. uh, I, I haven't had a ton of like video game auditions since then. I don't know what that says about my performance in, in Shadow of Mordor. <laughs> but... Troy and Laura were all like, don't ever cast this guy in anything again. Get him out of here. <laughs> um, no, uh, I would love if, 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 the, if the opportunity presented itself, uh, I'll put it out there. I, I would jump at the chance to do a video game. Again, uh, motion capture was so, I only had like a few days of it, a very limited experience, but uh, it was just, uh, it was so challenging, but mm. so cool. It felt like I was doing a play again, because once you have the scene, the way that the, the director wants it, you have it from every conceivable digital angle. I've never worked that way before. Sure. I do remember yeah, locking uh, camera rigs with Troy Baker and I felt uh, terrible because I felt like I almost br uh, broke his neck. <laughs> I was gonna it's say that's like, it's like when you're like the horror stories of like braces getting entangled when you kiss yeah. for the first time. Like, ugh, can't do that. Yeah, we were we had to talk kind of close and whispered at one point. We were hiding from orcs. It was a whole thing. And then um, I had to run away, and I remember being like, "Got it!" And I ran away, and my camera like hooked his. Oh, oh! I still have I still have like I was so embarrassed. Uh, but but should be. So I should. But saying that, I would love to do one again in a heartbeat. No matter what, it'd be amazing. Okay, I'm glad you're putting that out into the world. That'll I'm happen now. There, gonna, now. there you go. <laughs> um, another question I have for you again, because we're internet friends, but not yes. you know we we haven't sat down and had that beer and like we talk 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 talk. Did you always know you wanted to be an actor? Like, was that a foregone conclusion? Because obviously your parents are. Was yeah, there a point yeah. where you didn't want to do that? I think that they more so proved to me that it was like possible like i had two examples of people going into acting and succeeding and making a living doing it i think sure. the reason that i wanted to do it was i did honestly it came down to this i did a play i did midsummer night's dream in seventh grade i had to like stay after school i auditioned for it i, I had to rehearse um and i just made such good friends there i think going back to the boys like i think that that's what i think that really matters to me about acting is a sense of community and little families that get formed. Um, I made friends on that play when I was in seventh grade that I still have to this day, still work with. Um, 
and uh, I was bottom, the guy that gets turned into a, a donkey. And I got my first laugh on stage and I was like, this is cool. I would, this is the stuff. I, this is the stuff. Um, but it was just so much fun. And, and from that's what kind of gave me the love of doing it. And from then on, I just wanted to keep chasing that because I truly love getting into it and, and figuring out a character. And it's, it's just, it's just fun for me. Two questions from that then. Yeah, yeah, please. Where, where, where you get the laugh and you get the bug, are your parents supportive of that? Or are they like warn you about yeah. stuff or, okay. No, they were, they were, they were, they were kind of like, just, just do this for now. Like just, just do. Start small, at step school. by step. Yeah. Don't like, we're not gonna, you know, I don't think they could anyway, but they're, they're, they weren't going to try to like make me a child star. Like I, I, sure. I tried, everything I tried professionally, I tried when I was like 17. That's when I like first started going out on auditions and, and everything. But I was just kind of a kid for for that whole period of time, which I think was good for me because I, I don't think growing up on sets, some people have gone, have done it and have, have turned out very wonderful people. But I think for me, it's not really quite reality. You know, it's like sure. uh, like I'd like a coffee, and then somebody gives you a coffee. Like, <laughs> you know, so it, it was good. I'm glad that I just kind of. You know, I made movies with my friends uh, and uh, we made a 55 minute long movie when we were in eighth grade called Bicycle Cops. It is terrible. Um, Put it on we, YouTube. Put it on YouTube right now, you coward. I will never. I will, ne I will never do it. We, are, we, are, we shot it in sequence, a thing that never happens. Uh, and we we're going through puberty. So our voices are, you can hear our voices <laughs> drop and go through changes in real time. It was during that time where, you know, when you're going through puberty and like, a week makes such a difference about like sure. what you look and sound like. Like that was the course of that movie, and it's just so bad. But uh, we did it, and it was it was so much fun. My second question was: You talked about obviously your parents being examples of oh you can make it, and I I might be jumping off the wrong bridge here. So let me know. No, that's fine. You're good. You you were raised in the L.A. area, right? Or Hollywood? Yeah, yeah. Area no, I'm like I'm totally a an L.A. Uh, celebrity kid or whatever. So, I'm so was it? Was it the same thing of on top of your parents showing, oh, this is an achievable thing? Was it the fact that you're going to school with a kid whose dad is a director or a producer or this or that or right? Like, did you yeah, feel I mean, like you were around the business the entire time? Yeah, I was. I mean, yeah, I mean, that was definitely a part of my surroundings that I, I'm sure I soaked in. I, I don't think I was like, that guy's dad can get me a job. No, I didn't mean like I that. Like, but, <laughs> I better invite him to the Halloween party. This is gonna pay off. Well, I better get the, the invite to that bar mitzvah. Um, but no, no, no. I mean, yes, I was definitely surrounded by like movie culture and movie, you know, like yeah, my the one of the guys who I made bicycle cops, the classic we all know. Uh, we're all waiting for the bicycle cut. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, we're all waiting for the bicycle. Oh, that's great. Um, yeah, his dad was like a writer and the, the other kid's dad was an editor. Like, yeah, we all, you know, we grew up in this town and I think it does influence you. And I think it was just good to have, I think we all were lucky to have parents who were in the industry because they were they were supportive and they knew that it could be done. Like, I feel like it, with a typical family, if you were to say, hey, I want to be an actor, the response might not be as kind as the one that we had. You know, sure, like, sure. Like, that doesn't seem practical. Like, why would you do that? You should get a real job. But we didn't have that. And I feel very, very lucky to, to have had that growing up for sure. Excellent. Yeah. <laughs> well, Jack, as you know, uh, kind of funny is all about the kind of funny community and best friends. So I'm going to you're going to be entering the friend zone in a quick moment where the best Ooh. friends will write in with their questions for you. But before then, I want to remind everybody, this is We Have Cool Friends. Remember, ladies and gentlemen, we're your irregularly scheduled interview podcast. Each and every week, we grab one of our cool friends to talk to them about the cool things we're do they're doing and we're doing, I guess, to an extent, whatever. Uh, next up is going to be Jennifer Hale. That's right. Commander Shepard herself is coming by uh, next week. However, we're filming that ahead of time. So go to patreon.com slash kind of funny where you can get your questions in for the friend zone for her. On top of that, of course, you can get the show ad free on patreon.com slash kind of funny. You can get the exclusive show Gregway. And of course, you can get each and every episode of We Have Cool Friends without the ad I'm about to read. However, before then, thank you to our Patreon producers, Mohammed Mohammed, aka Momo, and Al Tribesman, aka the Predator, who went over to patreon.com slash kind of funny to support us. And speaking of ads, Gregway, this week. We Have Cool Friends is brought to you by We Have Cool Friends. That's right. We're doing a week push here for We Have Cool Friends. It's our weekly podcast. We'd love you to subscribe to it on kindoffunny.com slash WHCF. That will take you to a link where 
All the different podcast services are listed. We'd like you to click on all your favorites and subscribe to us there. Of course, ladies and gentlemen, you know, we added We Have Cool Friends, not on a January 5th uh, anniversary stream like the normal launch of our shows, which means that it didn't get the usual push of people going and subscribing to it. So the show does fine, don't get me wrong, but we want to get more subs in there to get more downloads to make it look better and have all these things happen. So if you could go to kindoffunny.com slash WHCF and subscribe on the podcast service of your choice, we'd really appreciate it. All right, back to Jack Quaid. Hey, Jack. Whoa, whoa, where did I go? Yeah, I know, right? We just put you in the limbo. You're out in the Phantom Zone. Nobody knows what oh, happens to you. Oh, man, that was scary. So I want to I commend you. You had oh. a ton of good questions written in for you. Oh, okay. Patreon.com slash kind of funny. Be part of the show. People came out just in droves here. So we're going to start with Chris Hinton, who asks, asks a question that I agree with. <laughs> Hi, Jack. I'm dying to know, is Anthony Starr as terrifying in real life as he is on the show? Mm. This absolutely. dude's performance puts me on edge, Jack Quaid. I can't deal with it. Uh, absolutely not. No, he is not at all terrifying. In fact, I know him as one of the sweetest, uh, goofiest people I've ever met in my life. Okay. Um, just uh, could not be more of a goofball, actually, which I know is very really? good, especially if you just know him as Homelander. But uh, like, he's very good at turning that on. And I, I admit, even when I'm on set with him and he's in the costume, it's scary. But yeah, like, yeah. yeah, me and Anthony out at a bar, the sweetest, he's like a, he's like a gigantic, like Labrador retriever. He's like the greatest person ever. All right. Good to know. Yeah. Cause yeah. like this season, especially it's on another level. I feel with yeah. him, where you're like, Oh my gosh. And I think, I think him being such a sweetheart in real life, that just proves like what, I mean, you all know this, but like what a fantastic actor he is. The fact that he has that part of himself that he can just access is just insane. <sighs> Mitch Krasen writes in to patreon.com slash kind of funny, just like you can. It says, is there anything different with working on a project with Amazon? Mostly curious since they're obviously weren't a production studio initially, like an ABC or a Fox. Right, right. Um, uh, not, not, not that I know of. I know I've worked with them a few times. I did like a pilot for them that didn't wind up getting picked up, but they remembered me from that. And I think that helped me with the boys. But both times they were, yeah, they were just, they were really great. I, 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 yeah, nothing, nothing super different. That pilot I did was part of their, um, they don't do this anymore, but it was part of their like pilot season thing where yeah. they would throw out three pilots and people would like vote on the one they wanted to get picked up. I think Man uh, in the High uh, Castle was another one of those, right? Where they yeah, were like really was. trying it out. Yeah, yeah. I was part of like the last one they ever did and none of the shows got picked up, but uh, <laughs> I'm happy where I am now. Don't, don't get me wrong. Um, that's the one thing that I, that struck me as a, a different way that they, go about things but now it's it's a little bit more like what everybody else is doing when it starts and you, you start getting involved with them is there that like oh are they committed to this feel like it was an it was a newer thing to see them doing original programming and so yeah. i think even as me somebody who's not dialed into the entertainment industry i was like all right that's cool but like is this how long are they going to keep this up or what are they going to do, do yes. i think that no matter where the show is as long as it's a good show i don't think it really matters because i think if you make something awesome, people are going to find it, you know, That's whether it's whether it's like, a, I don't know, just your own original content or whatever. Like if you make something great, people will find it. So, yeah, no, I, it, as long as they were making cool stuff, I didn't really have a, a problem with it necessarily. Although at first you're like an Amazon show. <laughs> you definitely <laughs> have that. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. exactly. Uh Alexis Perez writes in to patreon.com slash kind of funny, just like you can. It says, what are some things you hope to see brought over from the comics? And what are some things you hope won't get brought over? Well, I think in terms of the stuff that I don't want getting brought over, I think we've already kind of achieved that because I don't know the tone of the show. There are a few things in the comics that are insane, but a little too insane. Like moments where I had to take a knee for a second and stop reading uh, really? for a little bit. Yeah, just a few things that were... I, I know this is like must be weird to hear me say that because I'm in a show that's like just all about insanity, but there's insanity for insanity's sake. And then there's character building insanity. And I think we've aired, uh, aired more on, not that I don't love the comic, but I think we've aired more on the side of, you know, when something crazy happens, there are consequences and it changes people. Um, sure. That's that's a hundred percent fair. I think yeah. yeah. The comic was very much as much as and again. I remember we did it. We do it or used to do a show called Greg's Comic Book Club where we would do a signed reading. And it was like oh yeah. And I remember on the lead up to the boys, we did volume one of the boys again. And it was yeah. the first time I had read it since twenty seven two uh, thousand seven. Right. And it was that thing of like 
oh wow okay yeah this was a different period for like yeah, you turn the page of- and it's shocking and it's sexual and it's this yeah. and it's like oh wow that's not how the show is at all <laughs> yeah i mean like we have a little bit of that but we're not like like throwing it at you all the time yeah, 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 yeah. Um, and in terms of stuff I want in, there was a great uh, uh, aspect of the comics called the G-Men. They were kind of our universe's X-Men. Yeah. And they were all just like college kids who uh, got these powers. Uh, and in the comics, Huey has to go undercover in their ranks. And he's wearing this terrible, ill-fitting uh, superhero suit. And I, I love the idea of Huey undercover. And I love the idea of him posing as a soup. Uh, so that's my <laughs> personal pitch. I just want that in the show, uh, period. Okay. That's yeah. fair. That's fair. We'll take that. We'll take that. I, this is an interesting one because we've talked about you reading the comic, right? And we've talked about the improv, but, uh, Chiminda here writes in and says, uh, Hey there, Jack and Greg, the podcast is sounding great right now. Parentheses. Oh. Yes, I am from the future. So that's, that's helpful. I'm glad oh, that's great. very helpful. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I couldn't think of a question cause I suck. So I asked a good friend uh, and he, uh, my good friend uh, Lane and he asks, what kind of method or tools do you use to help realize a character? We both love the boys and are hyped for this coming season. Stay safe out there, Jack. Oh, thank you. And by the way, you don't suck. You're putting yourself down. You're like, I don't have a question cause I suck. You have a good one. Um, you're, you're getting ahead of yourself. I don't know. I don't have enough information to determine if. Okay. <laughs> um. Thank you. Uh. Yeah. Uh. I think in order to get into character for Huey, it was a lot of, it was a lot of imagination stuff. Kind of putting myself uh, in his shoes in my head, like daydreaming. Honestly, um. I I did a lot of that. Uh. Kind of what really mattered to me was building kind of a backstory for uh, Huey's relationship with Robin because we only get, um, I don't know, five minutes with her before she's right. <laughs> gone. And that that scene is kind of darkly funny, but I, I needed it to, at least for Huey, feel like a real loss because that's what starts everything. So uh, that was really important to me. I use, uh, I, I make a lot of uh, playlists. I make like a, a playlist for about each character I play just to get me in like the headspace. It's oh, just that's songs awesome. That re- songs that remind me of them or have an aspect uh, to them that I feel like is similar to the character or just kind of put me in, in the mood. Um, and it's not uh, it's not always what you expect with Huey. Yeah, there's a lot of like Billy Joel and James Taylor, but uh, you know what? I'm going to get this out right now because I have it. Uh, put it on Spotify. I, I I I think we are. I think that's that's coming. Oh, sorry, Dad. Um, I was getting the Amazon social way. <laughs> I got there some. It no, it's okay. all good. Uh, right. I got some Haim. I got some a uh, Wolfpack. I got some. Uh, oh, I have um, this song from the Red Dead Redemption soundtrack, Trigger oh, yeah, yeah. Uh Doctor Dog, Odetta, the Lumineers, Decemberus, uh, N E R D. A lot of stuff happening. Alabama Shakes, Spoon. Lots going on. So you build this book, like, are you listening to this the, on your drive to the set? Are you, like, yeah. when you're reading scripts? Okay. A, a Tomer uh, Capone, the guy that plays Frenchie, his impression of me is, uh, is this, is, oh, hey, man. And then giving him a hug. <laughs> I'm always, I, I have them in a lot just to, it really does help. And then in addition to that, creating like visual stuff, just getting like images from online and almost like not a collage, but just a, a file of just stuff that makes me, I don't know, brings up stuff. How long did it take you to find that kind of rhythm or find those kind of tools? Because I think that's something that's when we see people for the most part acting, we see them acting in a movie on a fake movie set for the movie we're watching, right? So it's that thing of like, and cut, bring, bring, all right. And they walk off and they're immediately bullshitting around their friends and yada, yada, yada. Is that, that sounds like that's a longer process of you settling in and then I would assume coming out. Yeah, it's, uh, well, it's it's weird. I think maybe for the first week or two, it is a little bit longer of a process. Um, I'm not like a method guy. I'm not like a guy. I guess that that is kind of method, but I'm not like like I, I don't demand that people call me Huey. You know, on, on this <laughs> um, it's I think in the first week or two when you're first getting you know settled and you're still kind of finding it. Yeah, uh, it can be a little bit hard harder to go in and out. Uh, but then once you, I mean, especially like season two of The Boys, I felt it was a lot easier i think it was for all of us we just kind of snapped sure. into it uh sure. because we we kind of got all the 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 earlier stuff done with you know we we just figured it out but then how do you build on that that's the like that's the challenge of a second season and a third you know 
and that's the next question I had for you of piggybacking off this. What's it like to be in this position now where I think season one drops, you're filming season two. Holy shit. They love it. This is great. Season two drops in the middle of a pandemic. Uh, you know, I saw my former IGN colleague, Eric Goldman went to the screening drive in social distance thing. All you right. all did. And he was yeah. there like, you know, getting photos with you guys from six feet apart. Like, <laughs> do you feel like this weird, I, I, and this is, I guess, even a, a dumb question because I'm sure you do. We all feel it. But do you feel like this weird, like, oh, man, my life's on hold for this second? And are you able to appreciate this moment still, even though it's kind of yeah. tinged with we should be shooting, I assume, season three? Yeah, well, um, yeah, no, it's just we're just living through history right now. I think I've just kind of resigned myself to to be like, yeah, like, I just feel lucky to have things that are coming out during this time. Honestly. Sure, sure. sure. Uh, and, you know, I'm. And and the fact that we have a season three that is that is gonna still happen, you know, uh, probably when you know we've been picked up for a season three. Uh, I'm not exactly sure when we're gonna film it, but like it is it is out there. The fact that I have a job waiting for me at the end of the pandemic rainbow is is yeah. just awesome. And uh, yeah, no, I, I feel look, this pandemic's terrible and it's affected so many people. I feel incredibly lucky to still be able to do what I do to some extent uh, during this. So I, I'm really okay. I, it's just kind of, hopefully it's a thing where years from now, I look back on this being like, remember when we did the drive-in social distance? <laughs> premiere? Uh, whoa, that was nuts. Um, so yeah, no, I, it, it could be a lot worse is what I'm trying to say. Understandable. Yeah. Good outlook. Yeah. Uh, you have two questions left here in the friend zone. All right. Please. The first is a palate cleanser. Clear your mind, all right? Center yourself. You're going to hear the question. You're going to answer. You're not going to overthink it, all right? Mm -hmm. Patrick writes in and says, in your opinion, who has the better movie catalog, your mom or your dad? Mom. Damn. See, there it is. Bam. Some, it's, it's. Uh, oh, man. I might get in trouble for that. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> I will be shocked if your father yeah. watches. Dennis Quaid's watching We Have Cool Friends. Like, what did he fucking say about Live me? Right now? Yeah, he's in the Twitch chat. Like, How dare you? <laughs> um, no, I don't. I think I don't know, that just came out because uh, I just like I don't, I don't, there's some iconic movies in there. Not that my dad doesn't have any of those, but uh, I guess that was my knee jerk reaction. They're hey, both, you, they're, they're you both know, doing it was, fine. <laughs> they're both okay they're your fine. parents they're doing just fine don't okay, worry okay. about them they're fine. all right and your final question uh comes i had it wrong from arvel arvel writes in and says is a is a walk but stick with it i really like it hi jack i like your portrayal of huey and the boys pretty much that being said i've been a star trek fan for nearly 30 years and wanted to use this opportunity to thank you for your uh portrayal of ensign uh bullmiller i'm to butcher that brad okay. in lower decks no one can say his name of uh, the boiler's last name can, no one can say it <laughs> uh your show is seriously funny and i'm getting serious flashbacks to my childhood when i watch star trek the next generation when i'm watching your show as a kid i wanted to be as curious as data or data uh, as M M M M i'm gonna screw up every word now uh empathetic <laughs> as uh deanna troy and honest as will Riker, and as thoughtful as captain picard now at 38 years i th i think i'm relating more to your character and his friends on lower decks Wow. My, qu my question would be, during the recent Star Trek Celebration streams, you mentioned how you've gotten a lot of Star Trek homework to do from your executive producer. So mm -hmm. what have been your favorite Star Trek moments so far? And what would be the starship that you would like to serve on personally? All oh, the best and, and live long and prosper. Uh, Kai from Germany. Thank you, Kai. Um, that's a great question. Uh, okay, some of my favorite Star Trek moments have been... Um, uh, uh, Chain of Command Part Two, obviously, with uh, with the whole uh, there are four lights. Just the that entire um, <laughs> performance from from Patrick Stewart is just absolutely insane, and I, th I think that might have been like the first thing I watched. Uh, just to, I think it was good because I don't know. It, in an instant, you know why people liked uh, Next Generation and why people are so rabid about that particular show. Um, I also love measure of a man where, uh, it, and it does kind of the same thing where, you know, data is on trial and, and whether or not he's human. I think that that's such a great episode. And, and I do like the kind of courtroomy episodes and it did the same thing of just, I think I, my focus was to 
soak in as much next gen next generation as I could because that's when uh, around the time when Lower Decks uh, takes place. So both of those were amazing. Um, there was one other question in there. Uh, what favorite? Oh, what starship also... you'd want to serve on? Oh yes. Who? Um... Oh man. Just in terms of the look of it, or just uh, who's you who's... interpret the question how you want. You clear your who's mind and you answer. Don't worry. Oh, You've already man. offended your mom. It's fine. It's fine. <laughs> uh, let's say, I don't know. I think the TOS Enterprise is just, is just, I don't know. It's just classic. Yeah, I know of it's course. just that, you know, it's basically on a string for that show, but there's something just so sleek and, and cool about it. Voyager also looks dope as hell. Um, I'll go with the TOS ship. I think that's what I'm going to say. Okay. Yeah. Good that's answer. A, you did. And also, you, you, get, you get to hang out with Spock. I mean, what's not to like? Great point. Yeah. Jack Quaid, thank you for being our cool friend. Thank you for uh, having me as one of your cool friends, Greg. Where can people keep up with you? People can keep up with me um, on social media. Uh, Jack underscore Quaid, Instagram. Jack Quaid 92, Twitter. Um, I have a podcast, uh, Dungeons and Dragons podcast called Hero Club. Uh, it's on Spotify. It's on Libsyn. It's on... Apple podcast. It's everywhere. You find uh, it. You type it in. You find it. You type it in. You're going to get it. Just type it. Um, <laughs> yeah, that, that's it. Okay. Watch the boys every Friday. Watch now the, right, watch the boys. <laughs> I'll watch help. The, watch the show that I'm here talking about. Watch the boys. Uh, we have a new episode every Friday. The first three are available now on Amazon Prime Video. Uh, watch Star Trek Lower Decks. That's on CBS All Access every Thursday. And uh, yeah, that's about it. Awesome. Thank you for uh, my cool friend, Greg. It's an honor. Oh, to be. please. Oh, uh, please. I, after this, we're exchanging PSN names because I got. I didn't realize yes. you're getting the platinum trophies out there. I got to be. Oh I got to look through this I'm profile and see what's play going games on. Games with Greg Miller. This there is there you this go. Amazing. Well, the, your, the dreams keep coming true. The dreams keep coming true, man. The Carl Urban billboard, and you get to be PSN friends with Greg Miller. What a what a what a Thursday for you, uh, ladies and gentlemen. This, of course, is we have cool friends. Each and every week, we get our cool friends together to talk about the cool things they're doing. Uh, next up is Jennifer Hale, Commander Shepard from Mass Effect. Uh, can't wait to talk to her about everything she's been up to, voice acting wise. Uh, of course, get questions in for her Patreon.com/slash Kind of Funny. Remember, we are on a deadline. We are recording that Friday afternoon ahead of time, so you have to get questions in quick. Start thinking real quick about Jennifer Hale, Bioshock questions, and get going that way. Uh, yeah, but until next time, it's been our pleasure to serve you. Thanks for having me.